So I've got a very busy day on the allotment today, but I thought it's such a beautiful morning. I'll just do a quick tour around the back garden and the front garden. This is what we call the kitchen garden, but it's really um, focused in summer on pretty much everything that we harvest fresh on a daily or weekly basis. And the allotment is all the easiest to look after stuff. So it's all like the bulk beetroot harvest, the bulk onion harvest, uh, the bulk winter squash and all of that sort of thing. So that's how we split it. And then in winter, we've turned the whole of the back garden over to winter crops. So lots of uh, miners lettuce, um, salad rocket, um, winter purslane, um, lamb's lettuce, lots of kales, lots of garlic, things like that. And yeah, we, we really love it. We love that kind of constant cycling change. And we really like the fact that all the way through winter, the back garden is looking you know, really lush with growth. Um, and that's something that's changed a lot since we had a flower garden here, because when we, we had flowers here, it just looked a mess all the way through winter. And now it looks really lovely all year round. So let me take you around and you can have a look. So I've almost transitioned the back garden now to winter. I uh, love this transition, I really do. Anyway, let's take a look around. Actually, we'll just start here. So basically we've got baby leeks here, which will be harvested at kind of spring onion size. And we're looking forward to those actually. And they're growing really nicely. So they're bigger than any of my spring onions are at this point. And so hopefully they'll be ready before the spring onions are. All these piles of um, containers here, these are all full of potatoes. I think I've got 38 tubs of potatoes and that'll last us until May. And I'm not harvesting them, well I'm harvesting them every three weeks at the moment because of three different varieties. So that gives us a nice mix of potatoes. So then I've got some really nice golden beetroot. And this isn't our storage crop, this is just the stuff we'll be eating until the end of the year. And then we kind of switch over to the storage crop, which will be in the shed there, um, which we have is normally in October. Yeah, and that lasts us through until May time, when the new season beetroot are ready. So these are Romanesco cauliflowers. And this is chard. And it's kind of interplanted, well it is interplanted with more golden beetroot but the chard's doing much better than the golden beetroot just a few straggly summer lettuces that are left over and most of our lettuces now are back on the allotment we normally don't have any lettuce on the allotment in summer it's just too hard to keep it healthy but uh, yeah so we're full now uh, with everything that we need on the allotment but I've just left these in because I've got nothing to plant in their place right now and the beans as well when I did the last tour I think I was ready to take these beans out but uh, we've just been away for a few days we've just come back so some of those are a bit big but there's just you can see the old leaves here they got really battered up by the high winds a few weeks ago and the cold nights you know we were down to about six degrees centigrade it's too cold for beans and as you can see you know there's just a lot of dieback but now there's just loads of new growth and no loads of new flowers coming and loads of beans. I picked them on the other side yesterday. I've got this side still to pick today and just lush, healthy growth again. So that is a real bonus. I'm really happy about that. And we've got some spinach. I've actually got quite a lot of spinach on the allotment now and this is growing really slow. And I'm not sure whether it's because of the shade from the beans, but they do get a good sort of six hours of sunshine there. So I'm not quite sure why they're slow. Those plants are about five weeks old now, I think. Maybe a little bit older. And again, just some more straggly lettuces. And they're a bit flopped over because they got a good watering last night. And then here I've got some Christmas potatoes, just a couple of those. And then all these other containers are again full of uh, potatoes. Those are full of potatoes. Those are full of potatoes at the back there. Everywhere's full of potatoes. This is full of onions, drying. 
we've got two greenhouses full of onions drying at the moment last of the summer carrots the autumn carrots are ready now but, uh, so we've got a nice glut of carrots right now which is a really nice situation to be in Colette's doing pretty well apart from the one at the back there we've got a little bit eaten snails I think actually so I need to have a good look round and see what's happening with that you can see all those holes in the leaves and I've got sprout, little sprouts that I grow for the leaves hence the high density planting I don't expect to get any actual sprouts off the stems but we've got loads of sprouts grown for the actual sprouts on the allotment and these leaves are just beautiful and they're a higher quality leaf than on the bigger older sprout plants and then these are the winter kales and these will last us through until spring there's more kales here and more kales here and just a few kales in the front garden as well but this is enough kale for us this will last us um, we do have one more bed double bed on the allotment as well and but they're babies they're not uh, ready for harvest yet and a few in the front garden and then we've got some more beetroot again this is the stuff that will last us till the end of the year and parsnips and these are the parsnips I'm leaving for the longest I've got some more on the allotment that I'll start harvesting in sort of mid to late autumn grapevines doing nicely lots of grapes coming on there just need to give it a bit of a trim and there's my little grow bench got loads of onions on here I've got some more just germinating lamb's lettuce lettuce miner's lettuce pat choy tap soy and more lamb's lettuce there and then fairly soon all of these old tomato containers these will be replanted with garlic to harvest green in throughout spring and actually these will as well because we'll be eating these baby leeks um, in sort of mid-autumn probably and then again replanting those so yeah let's just take, take a look at the bottom of the garden lots of changes down here actually So we've got loads of blueberries still, which I'm really pleased about. It's really nice to have such a long harvest period for blueberries. I never really realised how good that was. And then this used to be the strawberry bed here. This is the bed I'm watering at the moment. This is an amazing waterer. You can adjust it in all sorts of different dimensions, so it's just the sort of right size to water either the whole of the garden. So if I put it in the centre here, right here it waters the whole garden and the lawn um, but I can also adjust it just down to such a small area as this so this used to be the strawberries and now the strawberries or well, runners from those strawberries are here and this used to be the brassicas and there were some really big if you remember perennial kale plants and I've taken those out because I've got new perennial kale plants on the allotment and I like to move them around and I don't like to leave them for too many years in the same spot because they just get too big and unwieldy and I've got loads of cuttings from them as well um, but I'm hoping this gets about six or seven hours of sunlight in summer so I'm hoping that will be bright enough for the strawberries but it's only the best bed really I've got for them and this is going to be new brassica beds down here because one of the things that we don't have space for at the moment are um, the flowering brassicas in summer. So we have loads of calabrese and purple sprouting broccoli in spring. And then we have plenty of stuff, uh, flowering brassicas and cabbages and things as well in winter, sorry, in autumn. But what we don't have is anything in summer. So cauliflowers and calabrese 
uh, and maybe a few summer cabbages are what's going to go in these beds kind of three different successions as well as lots of other crops um, for in the other time of year but the focus really is on the uh, summer flowering brassicas and just behind that water there's the raspberries that I've just given a good clean up they're all summer fruiters so you just take out the dead wood leave the new wood and tie them in and that is pretty much it apart from down here had a few spare ochre plants and so I popped them in this bed underneath the cherry tree and I'm hoping to get a really good crop of new seed ochre from this bed um, and might well give that away to people who are members of my buy me a coffee club and uh, so I'm really looking forward to that because normally I only give away um, perennial kale cuttings but this year I think I'm going to give away all of that all those ochre tubers so there should be enough for maybe 12 people something like that so if you're watching this video and you're a member of my buy me a coffee club then uh, drop me a line and i will see what i can do in terms of getting you put you on the list for some ochre assuming i get a decent enough harvest and let's just take a look at the rest of the garden so again more tubs of potatoes just a few herbs my cuttings and i just wanted to see the difference between doing them in water which needs changing and just sticking them straight in the compost i think sticking them straight in the compost is the best way to go do you agree <laughs> i don't know fickle so the cherry trees are all dying back now some lovely apples though we discovered that uh, this is a cooking apple and it was a cutting that we took off another apple tree which turned out to have two different types of apple grafted onto it and the one we took the cutting off was the cooking apple rather than the one that i really wanted which was the eating apple but anyway debbie was thrilled because we don't have a cooking apple tree and we've got some the pear tree it's doing quite nicely quite a lot of pears on here quite a few have been taken already and then more tubs of potatoes and then the front garden so we've got kale here and there's some really lovely little onions down here these are north holland blood red they don't look much at the moment but once they're cleaned up we use these in the salads right now because we don't have spring onions and they're absolutely gorgeous they're super sweet incredibly crunchy a great substitute actually for spring onions at this time of year so we're going to grow a lot more of these next year and yeah this is the front garden veg patch we've got some kales here spring onions here more kales here this is a edible but decorative kale and you can see already it's starting to look really pretty so I'm really pleased we put those in. We got those sent to us actually for free. And uh, quite excited to see what they're like. Got some lettuces here. Some overwintering onions here. Obviously cabbages here. And these are looking really great. We weren't sure when we put these in whether they would sort of work just around here. But they have done. Look at the size of that one. What a beauty. And there were some clets there, some courgettes, some chard, uh, apples, some more courgettes. And there's the kale again. So that's pretty much it. So a lot of this front garden will be replanted. So all down here where these lettuces are, these will be coming out in a few weeks' time. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what will go in there, like garlic, onions, things like that. So that is the front garden. So there we go. That was a very sleepy tour. I'm quite tired, actually. I've just been away for four days hiking 
and lots of driving as well. So I was kind of falling asleep when I did that tour. But <laughs> anyway, I uh, hope you like it. My name is Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.